The Horror of the Wicked, written by Thomas Dillard, read by the author. The night was dark and full of clouds hovering above the sky. Stars try to shine through the clouds, but are hidden underneath the darkness of night. Grasshoppers make their usual racket, hidden are large green blades of grass to cover up their existence, but speaking and letting everyone know of their presence as if they were right next to them. The front lights of the old truck shine through the darkness of night, exposing the front of the abandoned Dundreth building's decrepit exterior, casting shadows of the past within its abandoned hall. Three young people open the doors of the truck and walk out. Andrew on the passenger side, athlete wearing navy and gold letterman with the letters LN in bold golden colors above his chest. Carson, a young man with slick back hair, wearing a leather jacket and holding a glass bottle filled with alcohol. Last, Ashley, a beautiful young blonde with green eyes that wore a dress. All holding a flashlight as they stared in the abandoned building, one made largely of brick, standing two stories tall that looked as if it were tenfold its age with broken windows and shattered glass all over the outside of the building. The small peaks inside showed a deteriorating building perfect for haunting, hoping to keep out young teenagers homeless and worse. The owners had bumped up security to make sure that they did not get sued by unwanted trespassers. Bold signs that read, no trespassing, giving threats of prosecution if caught. The grass surrounding the building stood knee high and the gravel road led to its entrance. The old building felt as if it were alive watching all who came close with an intensity that would engulf all who came close to its entrance. Waiting for three just outside the entrance was an overweight groundskeeper wearing a wife beater and holding a flashlight into the darkness. It was Jason, and he was in control of watching the building at night, pocketing his $20 an hour. He was anxious, as if he were to be caught, he'd be out of a job and forced to flip burgers again. Did you really just drink that while you were driving? Jason asked Carson as he took a swig from the bottle. Of course. He said with a devilish grin. How else are I going to spend my Saturday night? I can only give you guys a max of two hours inside. Just promise me you'll be out by then. I don't want to lose my job. Carson mocked Jason in a high-pitched, fast-talking voice of everything he had just said, drinking again and offering Jason a drink, rejected by a hand and a squeamish look. Fine. Tell me, are you still any young, beautiful ladies? I just... I want you guys to get inside and go home, okay? When we've had our fun, we'll leave. And not one minute before we've had our fill. Carson took another drink and laughed at Jason's dismay. What happened here? Ashley asked, looking at the building, turning on her flashlight, staring at it in awe. It was many things. Andrew told her. A church, a school, a library built in the 1800s by the Drendeth family, emigrants from Germany. It was the largest building in our town back then. Everyone came to this building and treated it like a large city. No one knows what exactly caused everyone to run away from it, but one day it was abandoned and our ancestors built the downtown we now call home. And time has not been nice to the old Drendeth building. Why do you want to go inside? I don't like the way it makes me feel looking at it. You don't know? Carson said as he felt joy at getting to scare the young woman. Not now. Andrew waved his hand at Carson, not wanting to hear the story that haunted him every night. Carson ignored his command and told Ashley in vivid detail why they wanted to come here tonight at this time. Last year at a party, Andrew faced down on his own vomit. Says that his sister called him to tell him he was going to the abandoned Dundreth building saying that she would see him later and never be seen again. Andrew said nothing as his face grew red with rage. That night she went missing, her car was gone, she was gone, and never be seen again. We searched and searched for the girl. She was nowhere to be found. There was no evidence she ever came here. My friend is crying himself to sleep every night, thinking that she's still here. So I will do what I can to help him and look. You have no idea what you're saying. I know what she told me. You don't know what you're talking about. You were so high that night, you couldn't tell your head from the hole in the ground. I haven't touched a drug since that night. What about you? Carson said nothing as he stared down at Andrew with hate in his eyes. Come on, guys, Ashley said, trying to end the conflict without being forced to jump into the middle between the two men. Jason gulped in the background, watching on. Andrew let go of Carson's leather jacket, leaving a ripple in the leather where his hands had gripped. 
Carson pulled his jacket forward to undo the crinkle and finish his beer with one last gulp. Let's get the shit over with. Carson threw his bottle against the old building. The sound of shattering glass echoed through the woods and off the brick walls. He walked away from the group and up into the abandoned building, jumping over the first set of stairs with a leap inside the old worn-down building. Andrew turned on his flashlight walking inside the building as Jason followed behind. Ashley lagged behind holding her hands as she looked around to see what strange noises were coming from in the darkness. She quickly followed behind them as what was banging around in the empty fields interested her less and less the longer she was alone. Inside the building was a maze of stairs, rooms, and hallways. The floor was a littered mess of glass, rocks, and whatever else people left behind them inside. The walls were covered in graffiti from whatever perverse thoughts entered the minds of man. The group walked around the building slowly, looking at every odd and end that piqued their interest, inspecting it with their flashlights to examine it. One after another, they walked up the stairs. The wood creaked with every step they took. Andrew stood still, listening closely to a strange sound that came from the darkness. Water, Ashley told Andrew from behind him, still not saying a word as only the creaks of the wood and dripping water could be heard in the eerie silence. At the top of the stairs, the second floor resembled the former level. Andrew looked around the darkness, shining his flashlight through the halls. Andrew looked around the room and could see only a small leak dripping water into its corridor, forming a ring of mold as it continued to drip. I'll take all the rooms on the left, and you all take the rooms on the right. I never said I'd help you look around, Carson said, shaking his finger. Only that I'd go with you. I'm here just to have a good time. Nothing else. You're such a bastard. You're an idiot for thinking that you'd find anything in this dump. I will find her and you can go to hell. Why don't you try and send me there? The two men were about to finally break the peace and make war with one another when Ashley's frightened words broke up the argument. Guys, where's Jason? Andrew and Carson looked around the hallway, shining lights all over the walls and ground. The three walked into the direction Jason had gone last. Inside the second room on their right, they saw a light shining in the wall. Nothing written on the wall but random spray paint and torn down walls falling apart at the touch. On the ground lay Jason's flashlight, alone. Andrew walked over to the flashlight, squatted down and picked it up, still looking for Jason. Shining the light over the room to make sure Jason wasn't hidden in the room's darkness, but there was nothing. He's playing a game, Carson said shaking his head. A stupid game trying to scare us. I know it. I'm not playing. Come on, Ashley. Let's go walk around this place before I get bored. Ashley walked away and gave a somber look to Andrew as the two walked away from him. Andrew knew this was no game. This place was cursed, damned, and he wanted to find answers to what had happened to his sister. Room after room, he found nothing but glass, busted floor, and objects so mangled that it did not resemble what the creator of the object had originally made. A perversion of its very essence. Andrew's search became more and more infuriating, as searching for a full year had left his patience non-existent. Going inside an abandoned office where a dozen metal cabinets scattered the floor and stood covered in cobwebs from head to toe. Opening the cabinets, he scattered through paper after paper, dropping them on the floor and finding nothing of use in them. Letters about children payments, and useless papers that meant nothing to anyone who did not write it. Having his fill of spinning his wheels and getting nowhere in his search, he threw every paper in his hands to the ground and sulked himself on the idea that he had spent all this time looking for someone who he would never find. Putting his elbow over his dusty cabinet, he put his hand over his forehead and thought. Thought back to his past, where everything seemed so much clearer in the future. He remembered his sister, with so much clarity as a moment ago from now. Growing up in a home where their father spent most of his days burying himself in work, spending time with friends, and being with people that weren't Andrew, his sister, or his mother. And their mother was at home all day with a wine glass in her hand that was filled up to the brim but never seemed empty. To cope with the loneliness, Andrew would bury himself in athletics, cars, racing, and women spending as much time as he could possibly getting himself into anything that would keep him far from home. Late nights of practice and running the town, only to come home to sleep and be out before the sun was up in the morning. For his sister's attention came easy to a pretty young girl. Love was what she craved most of all. She got plenty of attention, but no true love. 
Her senior year, she fell into a deep depression. No one could figure out why. She would hardly speak. Andrew was consumed with himself, so any cries for help were missed by the blind young man. Her grades fell, ignoring her friends, and the day she left, the only person she contacted before leaving was her brother. Not even taking a suitcase with her, only the clothes on her back and her car were the only things she took, disappearing into the world, never to be heard from again. Andrew's guilt was too much for one person so young to bear. The feeling of rage inside him from his cowardice was just as much as his feeling of failure, refusing to step foot close to the ground until now. The cool breeze inside became as cold as ice. Andrew's breath became visible and goosebumps ran up and down his limbs. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw her, a figure all in white. Her apparition lasted only for a second, making Andrew doubt if he had ever seen anything. Hello? He asked, shining his flashlight around the room. In the darkness, he could only feel, though he could not see. In the darkness, he could see figures long since dead, some angry, others envious of the living, and all wanting him, wanting his life. The feeling of darkness covered his body and caused his heart to beat like a slow, thunderous drum. Andrew began to sweat as he felt the world being closed in around him, darkness of black death as he began to choke, but in the darkness, a burst of light shined through, burning through the darkness and giving him the air he so desperately required. He could feel something leading him to the exit, the feeling that had protected him from becoming another name on the back of a milk carton. A warm feeling led Andrew to the top of the staircase, but he forced his feet to stay still, not moving any further. He would not leave until he found her. Never would he leave until he could see her again, dead or alive. A scream came from a lower level underneath Andrew. For a moment, he thought it would be his sister. Looking down the staircase, he saw nothing. Only darkness, as he had seen so many times before. Andrew began running down the stairs to find the cause of the blood-curdling cry for help. Outside the building, Carson and Ashley were approaching a cemetery long since forgotten. A tall black iron archway stood at the entrance. A rest in peace sign that stood in front, vandalized with blood red spray paint, a skull and bones over the words. Inside the cemetery, it was poorly kept. The final resting place of so many souls, remembered by a simple gravestone with a name and a timeline of what was once their life engraved into a marble stone, remembered by two years separated by a dash. Overgrown with grass, it stood knee-high, gravestones so old that it looked as if they would break upon the slightest pressure. Walking around in the summer heat that still made both of them sweat, even at night, they looked over the cemetery with the sound of crickets so loud they had to raise their voices to yell to hear one another. Ashley takes her time looking at every grave, curious to see how old the stones and people were, boiling their life down to a beginning, a space, and an end. Carson kicked around the grass as he had become bored and instantly regretted his decision to come outside and wanted to return to the cold air within. Ashley felt the heat leave her body as a cold darkness took her breath. Feeling a cold air around her body causing goosebumps to pop up and down her arm and the back of her neck. Looking around she could feel but not see, believing that something was around her, someone. Having reached her limit for the unknown horror when she felt something grab her left ankle. Pulling away, she looked down to see nothing. No one. I don't know how much longer I want to be here. Ashton was holding herself to stop from shaking. I didn't drive all the way out here just to go home, Car said annoyingly. We need to stay here for at least another hour. And then we can go home. Promise? Sure. Carson then began to unzip his jeans in front of Ashley. What are you doing? She asked. I'm not ready for that. Not here. I'm well aware. I just need to take a leak. Why must you be so disgusting? Ashley turned her head away from him in disgust. It's all right, Carson said as he urinated on as many gravestones as he could reach. Wherever the hell these people are, I'm sure they're thirsty. So I'm just giving them something to drink. <laughs> Ashley's face tells the whole story of her repellence towards Carson's behavior. Let's go back inside and cool off, he said, unzipping his pants and walking inside. Within the building, Carson is drawn to the stairs leading down to the basement. The words, portal to hell, with big arrow pointing down to the staircase, are spray painted on the wall in bold black letters. After you, Carson said, bowing his head for Ashley to take the lead. 
Her rejection was easy to see. Fine. Follow me. The stairs creaked and squealed as the two walked down the stairs to the basement. It somehow got darker and darker the lower they walked. The unsettling feeling of doom grew with each step. The basement was 20 degrees cooler than the normal chill inside the building. In the middle of the floor lay a straight black crystal that fit perfectly in Carson's large palms. The crystal seemed to engulf his mind and soul as he looked within it. Ashley felt the same draw to the blackness inside the crystal. The pull was so strong until Carson's hand went limp and he dropped the crystal on the dirty carpeted covered ground, protecting it from the beat up hardwood below. Coming out of the trance and rubbing their eyes, the anger that had plagued Carson came out as he began to speak. This place is cursed, Carson said, running his hand through the dirt and dust on the tables, rubbing his fingers together to get the debris off his hands before smashing his hand into the wood, leaving a permanent indention of his hand forever marking that he won't walk through these halls. Most people don't know why something as great as this place was left for the birds. During its heyday, everybody and their mother came here, and people truly believe that they just left for one day for no reason? No. Ten summers after the war, this building was still filled with life. A group of men came here wanting to control the Dundrith. After a few deals, they bought it. The town and all its people. Taking this for all it's worth, the evil started small, closing the windows at night before doing shameful acts. Their sins grew more and more with each passing moon, until their blasphemy was done in the light of the day. In front of all, the Dundreth soon went bankrupt, breaking all the men who bought this place and taking the town with them, cursing this place to be left for all to see their shame. And my father was one of those men. Carson bit his thumb as he wondered if telling Ashley was the right decision to make. His interest is at a peak, the alcohol making him spill his guts to her so plainly. I hate this place. I came here because I wanted to put all this behind me. My father only talks about those times, forgetting the present with us in favor of the past with himself. To hell with him. Ashley tries to help Carson, putting her hand on his shoulder, only for him to swipe her hand away as soon as she touched him. Carson bent over to pick up the black crystal engulfing his mind within it, swirling abyss inside. There must be something to it, Ashley spoke. The more you look into the darkness, the more it takes of you. You do the thing that you hate the most, and you enjoy it. The more you enjoy, you justify why you're doing it. That you'll stop when you want to, just one more time, before you realize the darkness is in you. Looking into a mirror only to see that you are the thing you despise the most. The darkness is as you and you must find a way to explain why the darkness is good. It matters little now, Carson said, staring at the black crystal. It's all bullshit anyways. Carson lifts the crystal above his head before slamming it to the ground with the fierceness of all of his anger. As if the crystal was holding a gas within it, thick black smoke filled the air the moment the crystal hit the ground and split down the middle. The air became toxic as the two of them coughed. Ashley takes a step back, covering her face with her shirt. Carson stood as if he was stuck in cement, inhaling the black smoke into his lungs, coughing like a man smoking a cigarette for the first time in his life. Something in Carson changed. The look of carefree rebellion now morphed to something of a child lost in the mall screaming for his mother. His lips began to shake uncontrollably. His eyes went from a deep blue to a soulless black as his pupils grew three times in size. Carson, what's wrong? Ashley asked, putting her hand over the back of his shoulder blade. Carson shook with terror, his body now an uncontrollable trembling mess that shook as if someone was crushing his mind and his soul within his flesh. You're scaring me. Stop with the pranks. Carson began to speak in tongues, languages unknown to him, and sounds that could not have been made from any language known to man. Slowly his head tilted back and his jaws cracked open as his eyes were now midnight black. Looking up to the ceiling above, he let out a scream that shook the very ground they walked on. His spine fell backwards with his body falling limp as he began to float in the air. Ashley knew this was no prank. This was something far out of his control, far from human abilities, and out of the world that she knew. Definitely not of a world that she wanted to become acquainted with. A blackness filled the room. Not of anything human, but of something darker. A person to the light, in favor of the dark. 
She could feel and see its presence begin to engulf Carson and much of the room in front of her. Lifting him up and taking him to the dirty bathwater across the hall, dropping him inside with a big splash. The shadow looming over him like a dark cloud above a raging storm. Only his hands remained above the water. His fingers began to move in a most mangled of fashions, representing the horror beneath the water as it pulled in and out around all the ten digits moving in different directions. The bubbles began to pop on the surface of the water. Ashley could almost hear a faint scream to help as each bubble burst. His fingers became stiff with rigor morotis setting in, in odd positions as the bubbles stopped forming on the surface. Ashley, stricken with fear and frozen in terror, stares at Carson like a deer in the headlights before his body disappeared forever. The darkness stops as she knew it would come for her next. Once the unnameable force burst after her, did her fear give way to motion. She took flight and ran behind the door as she entered, slamming it shut behind her. She couldn't help but scream as the door smashed against the evil force, trying to pry its way open towards her. Oh Lord, please. She begged, pulling the full weight of her body and all the force against the door. Every other second, the thing behind the door slammed itself against the wood, bursting it open only a foot wide and shut again by Ashley. The sound of a fully grown pit bull barked behind the door as it only grew in rage, not being able to take its prey. Ashley! Andrew was behind her as she jumped, turning her back to the door. On the verge of a mental breakdown, she looked down. Tears filling her eyes, she was overcome with emotion, forgetting that her life was on a razor's edge just a second ago. Throwing her arms around him, she held him close with her tears dropping into his shoulder. Carson. Ashley choked trying to say the words. He. Andrew looked at the door and the sign of a portal to hell and knew immediately what had happened. He took her back into his arms and he felt the same pain as the living chaos they currently occupied. We have to go now, Ashley yelled. One more thing I must see. No, Andrew, please. There is nothing for us here. Nothing. Andrew ignored her plea, taking her by the hand to the abandoned Catholic church that lay at the heart of the building. Here, he said, dragging her along. Here I will find answers. Fear had left his mind, and he was driven by madness more than bravery. Going headfirst into the church with the movement of his hand, Ashley's scream was so loud he was surprised that every glass in the building did not shatter. Inside laid every form of blasphemy known to man. The church had perverted into something so unholy, nothing sacred was held to anything more than a tool of destruction of the soul. With the paintings covered to a cruel torment of its former glory, the bones of the fallen turned into decoration and the most crude and inventive use of the human skeletons. Using them on top of the room with skulls looking down at all who entered and turning their remains into chairs as well as objects. In the middle of the church was an upside down pentagram. With candles covering each of its points, creating the only light within the whole church. Four witches stood bare as the day they were born in front of the pentagram. Their hair was so long it went down past their hips. Skin so pale it looked like a stormy gray sky. Behind them stood a warlock, dressed in black robes with a white beard that ran down past his stomach. His face was covered by a dark hood. He reached a slender arm out from under his robe, his staff held in the right hand that stood taller than him. He had the same black crystal on the top as the one Carson and Ashley had found. His arm was more pale than the witch's, riddled with gray spots. Looking older than a 200-year-old man as his arm dripped past his robe, Pointing his left arm towards Andrew, his fingernails are long and curly in length. His grip loosened from Ashley's as he walked forward. It's meant to be Ashley, he said of his own will. No more fear, and no more pain. Andrew, come back! Ashley screamed, reaching her arm out to grab Andrew, only to be met with air. The witch's pitch black fingernails resembling an eagle's claw that were as sharp as knives as it ripped Andrew's clothes from his body. He seemed to give in to his fate, even reveling in it, placing his naked body in, in the center of the pentagram as they began chanting. Led by a wizard, they spoke in a guttural language that was inhuman. The room shook as she could feel something from below this world being awoken. The witches turned their attention to Ashley. The door behind her slammed shut without a hand touching it. 
backing away as they moved in, glancing at their dark yellow eyes resembling a serpent's with the pupils slender. Get away from me, she yelled, swiping away the witches with their hands. You will become a part of us. The witches chanted one after the other, moving in closer to Ashley. She fought back on instinct, grabbing the golden cross necklace she wore that she was given by her mother. Stay back, she shrieked, holding out the cross from her mother. The witches and warlock took a step back in fear of what they saw, hissing and cursing her as they were powerless to touch her. Stay back, she yelled, this time with authority in her voice as she moved forward and back. Getting too close to the fire, she accidentally kicked over a candle on the ground. Rolling into a sheet, it quickly caught fire and began to spread throughout the building. The witches and the warlock screamed as the fire began to engulf the room. Ashley turned her back into the room and burst through the doors and into the hall in the middle of the building. The hall's objects inside were in a frenzy, flying around the tornado of madness. Ashley ran through the chaos and outside the building. Looking back, 